Hi everyone, uh, this video is just to show how I did my uh, diode test and came to those conclusions. So whatever information I'm sharing here, I'm just sharing. It's not written in stone or anything. Uh, it's up to you to decide if you want to use it or not. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the same capacitor here for the test, which is a 22 microfarad uh, capacitor rated up to 350 volts and uh, I've got my uh, basic simple circuit here happening which is a relay which is just going to uh, use a bridge rectifier to charge a cap disconnect the uh, bridge rectifier from the cap and then discharge the capacitor to the coil and the coils obviously attach the spark plug which is my spark plug that I modified by grinding off the J electrode and um, I find that this spark plug here is probably uh, the widest gap you'd probably be able to use in a uh, combustion engine it's very close to three millimeter uh, could be possible to maybe grind uh, around all here to increase the gap maybe by another millimeter so maybe about four millimeter max would be what we could ever fit in a combustion uh, engine if we want to use a spark plug um, now the first test here I'll do is just show you how much energy it takes just to create a high voltage uh, spark at this gap here and from 22 microfarads I find that I need to charge uh, the capacitor to uh, about close to 46 volts for it to create a high voltage spark now that's not the intense spark that's created once the uh, diode string is attached to it it's just the high voltage spark that I'll show here so I'll start it up and I've got the relay set to my signal generator to trigger very slowly so you'll notice uh, the voltage is charged at the capacitor here and then it will drop because basically what happens is the voltage uh, the DC that the bridge is showing will only be maybe like 30 volts or a little less uh, once the capacitor is off it but once the capacitor is back onto the bridge uh, it filters it and shows the true DC potential voltage that the capacitor will charge which will be close to about 46 volts alright so I'll start it up now and you'll see the spark there's one spark event recharged discharge missed that spark event <laughs> there's another spark event so it's just at the point where it does make a spark event. So it takes 46 volts at 22 microfarad to make a high voltage spark at that gap. If I reduce the voltage just by one volt, the event will pretty much stop. Now all I'll do, I'll stop it right now, and all I'll do right now is show you, once I attach this uh, diode string here, I've got 16 uh, uh, 1N5404s uh, in a string here and I'll use I'll change nothing here at all it's exactly the same way and I'll start it up and you'll see that just by attaching the string it started up there is no event there is no high voltage spark event all right so anything that will uh, reduce the path of the high voltage, like this diode string for instance, would stop the spark event. Here I'll just disconnect it and you'll see the spark event happen now. There you go, there's the spark event. Show you one more time. Spark event, I'll reconnect it. no spark event. So you probably need like 30 maybe of these diodes to uh, you know be able to uh, prevent the high voltage to some of it to go in there. I'm just showing that just to show you that you know we can keep adding diodes as much as we want but what's going to happen though you'll see in my next test 
is when you do that, I'll stop it, uh, you're also reducing the path the other way for the capacitor energy to come at the spark. So you have to find there's a balance point somewhere and you can find it yourself and do the tests. Uh, all I'm doing here is just sharing. So right now what I'll do is I'll dial up my variac here to bring the voltage up to 120 volts. All right, close enough. So we now have 120 volts DC going into the 22 microfarad capacitor. Now our diode, 16 diode string is attached. And what I'll do now is I'll start it up and you see the high voltage spark will happen. Okay. And the diode string is attached, but we are not getting the intense spark. This is just the high voltage spark happening. All right. Okay. So now what I'll do is I'll reduce the amount of diodes. Okay. So here, let's take that whole diode string off and I'll attach my, I'm trying to do this with, with one hand here. I don't know if I'll, no, I, I'll have to pause the camera here just to, okay, we're back. So now I've attached my six diode uh, string which is the 1N5408s, which are uh, 1,000 volts uh, rated each. Uh, and that's 1,000 volts at 3 amps, right? So if you're not putting 3 amps through this, you're most likely going to be able to put, it'll most likely block higher voltage uh, than the 1,000 volts or capable of handling higher voltages. Um, so we've got it attached. The voltage is the same. And now let's start it up. Same capacitor, 22 microfarads. The only thing is, is now it's a six diode string. And let's see what happens. So now we have the high voltage, the high intensity spark event happening. Oh, it missed there. It's just at the point of making it or not. So there it is. There's a miss. All right. So that's all I was sharing. What I'm saying is if your diode string is more and more diodes, uh, you're not going to be able to get the energy, all the energy out of your capacitor uh, to create the intense spark. So it's happening when you have the six diodes on the string. Uh, you decide what you want to do. It's true that the high voltage maybe leaks a little bit through it, but I assure you if I increase those diode quantity, uh, I'm not going to get the uh, intense spark happening. That event will stop. And I think that's the event that you really want and to get most of the energy into that. So I would say don't uh, increase your diode string more than what you need. Uh, you find the balance point by testing and uh, you decide from that.